Every Wheel of Time fan knows exactly how descriptive Robert Jordan's writing is. As someone with a chef's background, I thought it would be fun to do a reread of the books and as I come across food, I'll recreate a recipe that has to do with the situation in the area. So put your apron on and let's go and recreate the Stag and Lions Roasted Chicken Dinner. Welcome to the Wheel of Time Community Show. I'm your host, Kitty. Before we get started, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And of course, hit that alert bell so that you can be notified next time we've got new releases for videos. Today, we are going to be making the Stag and Lions Roasted Chicken Dinner. In The Eye of the World, Chapter 14, titled The Stag and Lion, we see the original Emmons Field group just relaxing around the table, deciding on what to do next, and they are served a lovely meal from the Stag and Lion. Now, they're doing a whole roasted chicken dinner. They also have hen peas and turnips. Since hen peas aren't really a real thing, and knowing what we know about Barillon, the town, it's not exactly a huge mecca of worldly flavor, so they're gonna go with what's local. And since it is an inn, they're gonna go with what is easy to prepare quickly altogether that has around the same cooking times because they have a lot of customers to feed. So we are going with a whole chicken, turnips, and Brussels sprouts. Why Brussels sprouts? Well, they're about the size of hen eggs and they're the color of peas. Hen peas, Brussels sprouts. I think it works. Now, of course, take and add whatever you need, whatever your dietary preference is, and whatever you like. By the way, the recipe I'm about to show you is listed in the show notes as well as on dragamount.com. Let's begin! Before we jump into the recipe itself, here are the ingredients you'll need. Feel free to take a screenshot of them right here, or you can download the full printer-friendly recipe from dragamount.com. So to make this, you'll need one whole chicken, four to five pounds, three tablespoons of a neutral high heat oil, vegetable or canola, divided, two teaspoons kosher salt, divided, one teaspoon ground black pepper, divided, two teaspoons of dried herbs such as oregano, thyme, parsley, rosemary, or a mix, divided, two tablespoons of fresh herbs such as oregano, thyme, parsley, rosemary, or a mix, divided, one medium turnip, peeled and diced, and one pound of Brussels sprouts, trimmed and halved or quartered depending on size. First, we're gonna start with the vegetables. So one pound of Brussels sprouts, you can buy them in a bag or you can buy them loose. Easiest way to do these are to cut off the very end and whatever leaves come off are whatever leaves come off. You wanna to try to keep them all around the same size. So some of them you might do in half and some of them you might just do in quarters. So this one is really small, so I'm gonna do just half. And if you compare these halves, obviously vastly different. So the bigger ones, I am gonna end up quartering. Now Brussels sprouts do make a mess, but the leaves get really crispy. I'm actually gonna bring my bowl over to put them in. Just don't put the ends in, but you can also get the extra leaves in there. Once your Brussels sprouts are in the bowl, time for the turnip. You only need one big one and make sure to peel it first. Once your turnip is peeled, just cut off the root end and the top end, cut it into slices, which are gonna be planks, and then we're gonna dice it from there. You wanna make sure it's about the same size as the Brussels sprouts so that it cooks evenly. So there we go, we've got a flat surface, top and bottom. I'm gonna go in thirds. And 
then these sides, the sticks, I'm going to make a little bit narrower. And then cubes. Now we've got the turnips and the Brussels sprouts together just in a big mixing bowl and it's time to season them. I've got my canola oil but you can use just any neutral flavored high smoke point oil that you like. Drizzle it in. Your salt and pepper. and then all of your herbs. I'm using a mixture of half fresh and half dried because that's my preference, but it will be in the recipe if you want all dried or all fresh or a mixture of all of them. Keep some of them for the chicken later because you're gonna put some on top. And then you can stir it, but I'm a tosser. Make sure everything gets coated Smells really good. All right, everything is well mixed. It's time to put it on the baking sheet. I personally hate washing sheet trays in the sink because I don't have a dishwasher. So I always use tin foil so I can just throw it away. Now you're just gonna lay it out towards the middle because you're going to use this as support for the chicken. Kind of flatten it down onto the chicken. The easiest way to make sure a chicken cooks evenly is to spatchcock it, which is just a fancy term for butterflying. So here's the front. We've got the breast, the wingies, the little leggies. You're gonna put it breast down on your cutting board. And then you're gonna cut out the backbone because then you're gonna open it up and flatten it down. It's the good reason for this. It's a little visceral, but it's kind of a normal thing to do with the chicken. And in the back, this is the backbone. We are gonna cut out the backbone. It's a little visceral, but it's a chicken and chicken is good. I am using shears. These are poultry shears. You can use strong kitchen scissors as well. I don't recommend using a knife. It can get slippery. So you're just gonna start at the base where the, to the right side or the left side of the spine, make sure your fingers are not in the way. And you're just going to cut through. You can hear a lot of crunching. And that's okay. You can go all the way to the top. Make sure it's all the way through. And turn it around. Do it again on the other side. Make sure, to, seriously, keep your fingers safe. Now this backbone, you can keep and use it for... To make a stock, you can keep it with the rest of the chicken afterward, or you can just throw it away. Almost through. Sometimes they're a little harder. There we go. Okay, your chicken is almost ready. So what you're going to do is flip it back over so it's breast side up. Turn the little legs inside out a little bit. So we're just going rotating them so that the little drumsticks face outer corners. And then we're gonna flatten the breast. Best way to do this is just pretend you're doing compressions. Both hands on top of the breast and press down on either side. You will hear some cracking, but that's how you get it to be flat. So we've got a beautiful butterfly chicken that I am now gonna place on top of the vegetables. So we're just gonna place the chicken right in the middle of the vegetables. Make sure the little legs are facing the outer corner and then the wings you can actually tuck behind. Kind of like your chicken's going, hey. Hey. All right. You can tuck the veggies around it a little bit. Now, 
Why did we butterfly the chicken? Well, when your oven, the middle part is going to cook a little slower than the outer edges. So if you put the dark meat towards the outer edges, it will cook quicker. And dark meat needs to be at a higher internal temperature than white meat. So this way it can cook at the same time instead of having dried out breast when your thigh meat is done, which I don't think anyone likes. Next, we're gonna quickly oil the chicken and put on the seasonings, and then it's ready for the oven. So a little bit more of that neutral oil just to get a little bit of fat on top. Just rub it on, you know, kind of like sun lotion. This chicken's having a beautiful spa day. It's really excited. All right, so we're nice and shiny, a little bit oily. We've got our salt and pepper, a little bit left over from before. You want to go a little heavy on this. Just sprinkle it on. Pat it out. And then we can add some more of our herbs just for on top. All right, that looks really good. The oven is already preheated to 500 degrees and the rack is in the top third. Let's get this dinner in the oven. And there we go. Oh, that skin is nice and brown and crispy. And the Brussels, I know they looked burned, but they've got that beautiful caramelization on the edges. And then the ones that are underneath the chicken are gonna be nice and soft. So when you mix them together, it's a beautiful juxtaposition of textures in your mouth. So in order to serve this, you can either, after it's cooled for about 10 minutes, put it on a platter for a very pretty presentation, or you can just carve it as is. Since we butterflied the chicken, you can just cut off the quarters and then take off the breast and then, you know, save the wings for yourself. Or you can even just like pull the chicken. You can use it in sandwiches. You can do a full chicken dinner. Just make sure when you serve the veggies with it that you get some of those edges with the soft bits on the inside. And there we go. You can find the full recipe in the show notes below or on dragamount.com. And be sure to share your creations with us by tagging Dragamount with social media. That's it for us today. My name is Kitty, and until next time, stay hungry. That's all for this episode. Thanks for sticking around till the end. As always, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button or leave a comment. We like comments, especially positive ones. If you have a friend who enjoys the Wheel of Tom, tell them about dragonmouth.com and our show. Special thanks to our show's sponsor, Tour Books, as well as to our Patreon supporters. If you want to learn more about how our show is made and get additional insights into real time, you can become a Patreon supporter. We have a lot of big plans for the show and your contribution will go a long way to making them a reality. Be sure to follow Dragon Mount on social media and see you next time.